All right, you guys, let's talk about the science behind how dogs learn agenda free. Let's go. Okay, you guys, so the science behind how dogs learn is rooted in behavioral psychology, neuroscience, and ethology. Here are 10 key principles in that regard. The first key component here that we're gonna talk about is going to be classical conditioning. Classical conditioning is simply a form of learning where a dog forms an association between two stimuli. The first stimuli has no meaning to the dog whatsoever. The second stimuli has significant meaning to the dog. We're gonna pair those things together over and over and over again. Think of a clicker. We click, we treat, we click, we treat. With, a, with enough of those pairings, we're gonna develop a conditioned response to the dog. And the clicker is now going to have meaning to the dog. And typically, it just simply precedes the delivery of food. And the dog, anytime they hear that noise, they know that food is on the way. The second key component here is going to be operant conditioning. This type of learning is based on the consequences of behavior where actions are either reinforced or punished. So there's, there's, so in that sense, there's reinforcement and then there's punishment. There's also a positive and a negative component to the both of those. So there's positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive punishment, negative punishment. Okay, the third key component is going to be social learning. Simply put, dogs can learn by observing the behavior of either other dogs and even people. An example of this would be a dog, there's two dogs. Dog one has to figure out to, how to open the door. He takes quite a long time. Dog two is given the opportunity to do that. And because he observed that dog one figure this out, he's able to actually resolve that problem much sooner. All right, so the fourth key component here is going to be cognitive learning and problem solving. Beyond simple conditioning, dogs can engage in more complex cognitive processes, such as understanding cause and effect or solving problems. Matter of fact, dogs are fantastic problem solvers. One might observe uh, how to open a door and then apply that knowledge to actually get outside. So uh, most of you are probably familiar with this and have seen this firsthand. The fifth key component is going to be the neuroscience of learning and how the brain actually works. The, the brain regions involved with this are going to be the hippocampus which is critical in the forming of uh, new memories and spatial navigation. The other is going to be the amygdala, which is involved in the process of emotions, especially fear and reward related behaviors. The other part is going to be the free prefrontal cortex, which is associate, associated with decision making and problem solving, as well as impulse control. And then there's also neuroplasticity. Dogs' brains, like humans, can change and adapt through learning experiences. They can also strengthen neuroconnections, making learned behaviors more ingrained. The sixth key component here is going to be ethology and instinctual behavior. Ethology studies how innate behaviors interact with learned behaviors. Simply put, seventh key component here is going to be habituation and sensitization. Habituation is the process by which a dog becomes accustomed to a stimulus over time, leading to a decrease in response. Sensitization is the opposite process, where repeated exposure to a stimulus can lead to an increased response. The eighth key component is going to be the role of genetic and early experiences. Genetic influences are very important. Certain behaviors and learning capacities are influenced by a dog's breed and genetic background. Then there's also 
the critical periods as a puppy, the first three to 14 weeks can really have a significant impact on a dog's ability to learn and adapt to different environments. The ninth key component here is going to be emotion and learning. A dog's emotional state can have a significant impact on its ability to learn. If a dog is afraid of something and they're highly stressed out, they may not be able to process what it is we're trying to show them. And the final and tenth key component here is going to be reinforcement schedules in training. In the beginning, when we're trying to show dogs new behaviors, there's a high rate of reinforcement. But once behaviors have become learned, it's a pretty good idea to develop a variable reinforcement schedule and get dogs to actually offer up behaviors or longer sequences of behaviors in order to access a reward. So all we're trying to do here is really just space out how often we're rewarding. We want to vary it. We want to keep the dog guessing so that they work a little bit harder to get that reward. All right, you guys, in closing, these scientific principles explain how dogs learn new behavior, adapt to their environment, and interact with other humans and animals. We hope you find this information useful, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.